seated the bright morning. And the morning star, the prince of peace, the alpha, and the omega. Walking in sunlight, yeah, yeah. all of my journey, oh, over the mountain, oh, over, over the mountain, mountain yeah. the through the deep end. Yeah, yeah. Don't you know that Jesus, Jesus has said, I, well, the Lord said, I'm never going to say, me. oh, Lord, that's a promise, divine word, a promise that never, never can fail, oh, 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 heavenly, heavenly, y'all will look like to do, oh, Always know the rewards, somebody shout rewards, of your labor of faith. So when David heard what was going on in this man, this giant, he's a little boy. Some scholars say he was around 15 years old. Little boy, y'all. But he heard. See, this is the value of having the spirit in you because it doesn't matter how tall the giant is. Oh, God, y'all not helping me. It doesn't matter how big the situation is. It doesn't matter how young you are, how small you are. Watch this. Or how inexperienced you are. When you have the spirit of God working in you, you know what's coming your help. Amen, somebody. And you know it's not going to be you that defeats your giant. It's going to be God Almighty that's going to deliver you. Amen, somebody. So you got some extra courage, extra valor when you know that God is working with you. But you need to know the rewards. Somebody shout the rewards. Always, do you know the rewards to get promoted at your job? Do you know what it's going to take to get you to the next level health-wise? Do you know what it's going to take to get you to the next level to purchase that house or to, to buy that car or to put away that? Do you know how much money it's going to take for those things? Do you know the rewards for your labor of faith? Now watch this. When David heard that this man was taunting the armies of the living God, David said, who is this uh can you see the sarcasm mark who is this uncircumcised philistine that's breathing threats and taunts against the armies of the living god do you in other words in the brian jones version do you know who you messing with uh -huh. amen somebody hey, raise your hand if you know you a child of god and your enemies don't know who they messing with amen somebody uh, so you got to make sure you know the rewards. Now watch this. First Samuel 17 and verse number 20. Let's go over to verse number 24. Um, <laughs> notice Israel. When all the men of Israel saw the man. Somebody shout saw the man. Amen. Watch this. Notice what they did. They fled from him. In other words, they running y'all. Amen. Uh, and were what? Greatly afraid. Notice what the men of Israel said. The people of God. Watch this. The men of Israel said, have you seen this man? Who is coming up. Surely he is coming up to defy Israel. Notice this. Let me slow it down. I'm getting too excited here. And it will be. That the king. Will enrich the man. That's giving him some great riches. Uh, church. The man who kills him with what? Great riches. And will give him his daughter. And make his father's house free. In Israel. Verse number 26. Then David spoke to the men who were standing by him. Notice what David says. This is, this is interesting. What will be done <laughs> for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should taunt the armies of the living God? In other words, David said, Brother Clement, can I get some clarification? Somebody shout clarification. I, I just need to make sure this is for real. You mean to tell me all y'all men of war are standing here knowing what God is telling you you can get if you if you defeat this man and y'all chilling? Claude, he's like, you mean to tell me we get great riches? That's not a one check. And you got to come back next year and file again. Amen, somebody. That's not an income. That's just that's great riches. Amen, somebody. That's mega riches. Then he says, um, I'm going to get a wife. Oh, y'all forgot. Bible says in Proverbs 18, 20, 24, uh, 22, he who finds a wife, <laughs> amen, somebody, finds a good thing and attains favor from the Lord. Then, so you get a wife, the king's wife, which a whole bunch of things come with that I don't have time this morning. Then you get your father's house. Your father's house will be tax exempt. That was the reward. Somebody shout reward. Some people know the reward, but are scared to get it. Why? Because they don't have the faith and the valor to know that God will elevate them if they step up to the plate, if they are a spiritual person. Amen, somebody. So you need to know that there is also a reward. Let me bring it to the New Testament. Uh, the, Bible, the Bible says, uh, without faith, 
Um, it is impossible to please God for he who comes to God must believe that he is watch it and he is a rewarder somebody shout rewarder of those who diligently seek him see the problem is we don't see God as a rewarder the problem is some of us don't see God as a rewarder so if you don't see God as a rewarder you don't expect anything but I don't know about you. If you got any faith, anybody got some faith up in here? I, I, I expect God to hear my prayer. I expect God to hear my cry. And I believe God will reward me. Amen, somebody. You got to see God as a rewarder because one of the biggest tricks that the devil does is to try to make blessed folk think they're not, they're not blessed. The biggest trick that the devil does is to convince blessed folk that they're not blessed. Because you see somebody else riding in a better car, you better be thankful for your car. Amen, somebody. You see somebody else with some Louis Vuitton or, or, or whatever on, you need to be thanking God for them Wranglers. <laughs> them comeback boots. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Them, them filas. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Thank, thank God for it anyhow. Because sometimes we, we, we're mad when we see other people and they look like they're prospering and we forget the devil is play, playing a trick on us because he wants us to think because they have something that we desire that we're not blessed when we already are blessed. Listen, listen, God didn't have to wake us up this morning. Okay, you need me to go deeper. Here it is. God never had to create us. God was God alone before he ever said uh, he was going to create mankind. Amen, somebody. So God created us because he wanted to. So you are not an accident. Look at the person next to you and say, you are not an accident. Go ahead. You're not an accident. God, listen, if God didn't want you to be here. Regardless of if it was a one night stand or however you got here, God wanted you to be here. Amen, somebody. So we need not never believe that there's always a reward for your labor of faith. Do you know what the reward is for you to be promoted? And if you don't, you got to find out. Uh, you got to have the spirit of God. Principle number five, accept the challenge. Say that with me, church. Accept the challenge. One more time. Accept the challenge. Sometimes people hear challenge and some people step up, but some people step out. Mm. Kind of person are you? And I tell people all the time that these men had what I call heart failure. And it wasn't talking about heart failure of the, the human heart. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about heart failure in terms of the heart of the mind. Amen, somebody. In other words, their, the Bible would say that the, David said that their hearts failed when they saw the enemy. Their hearts failed when they saw the giant. Does your heart fail when you see the circumstance? And, and, and let, me, let me just say this. Here's my commercial. I'm not trying to minimize what folk are going through. Because sometimes you are going through some stuff that, you know, it's just nobody else has went through it. Amen, somebody. We, there is no precedent for you to overcome it. Amen, somebody. But when you still have to understand, I believe that God is able. So I am willing to accept the challenge. Not that I can defeat him on my own, but because God is with me. Amen, somebody. Because the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16, verse number 18, that the Lord was with him. And can I tell you, I would rather go through life with the Lord with me rather than not having the Lord without me. Amen, somebody. So we got to make sure we understand that. Do you accept the challenge or does your heart fail and sometimes sometimes because of the past issues you've had in your relationships amen somebody and the past jobs and the past promotions it didn't go the way you wanted it to go so sometimes your heart will fail and watch this somebody will sometimes speak negativity into your spirit and can I tell you what the devil does the devil will use the people who are closest to you and sometimes they don't even realize they're doing it he will use the people who are closest to you to pour negativity into your spirit. All while you're trying to accept the challenge to fight the giant, he will use the people who are closest to you to tell you, guess what? You can't do it. You're not going to be able to make it. What is the devil doing? He's using people. Anybody here ever had the devil use people to try to distract you and bother you with negativity to tell you you can't do it? If you don't believe me, turn your Bibles with me to 1 Samuel 17. And let's look at the verse, round of verse, verse number 31. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 17, verse number 31, When the words which David spoke were heard, they told them to Saul, who was the king. Somebody shout the king. king. Who was Saul? He was. And he sent for him. Verse number 32. Uh, David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail on account of him. Your servant would go and fight with this Philistine. Notice verse number 33. Let's slow it down. Then Saul, who was Saul? King. Somebody shout the king. king. He's the leader, y'all. He is the one in charge. Then Saul said to David, you're not able to go. 
against his Philistine to fight with him for you, but a youth. While he has been a warrior from his youth, I told you the devil will use the people closest to you to tell you you can't do it. So what you have to do is make up your mind to accept the challenge. Negative words, hear me church, can mentally manipulate your mind and mobilize your momentum and your motivation. That's negative words. Somebody shout negative words. All right, here it is. Before you ever get to the fight, the, white, the, the fight is either won or lost in your mind before you even get there. Am I right about it? You, you know whether you, you're going to win or not based on your heart. And if the, the fight, if you have a negative heart and a negative spirit and you allow other people to spew negative, unspiritual things into your mind, your heart, then guess what? Then the battle is already lost before you even step up to the plate. Amen, somebody. So we got to make sure that we don't never allow the battle to be lost in our minds before we ever step up and use our strategy or before we ever throw a punch. Amen, somebody. So you got to understand that by negative words. Let me just tell you something too. The size of your problem doesn't matter with God. Can I say that one more time, church? I said the size of your problem does not matter with God. And can I even tell you this? That God experientially does not even have problems. Y'all smile with me this morning. <laughs> Let me tell you, God doesn't see a problem and be like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, I don't know if I can handle that one. There is never a day when God sees a problem and is like and, and just totally shocked, like in disbelief about what to do. God does not know nothing experientially about problems. God knows about problems because we have them. And we need help with our problem. So God helps us out with our problem. But God didn't have no problems. And God does not see a problem and says, oh, I can't solve that. Because, because I need to help you understand, but there's nothing too hard. For God, Jeremiah would tell us. Amen, somebody. Brian so C. Jones, minister of the Grace Free Church of Christ here in beautiful Anderson, South Carolina. We just want to take out this time to thank you for watching. We are broadcasting to 1.4 million homes in upstate South Carolina, western North Carolina, and northeast Georgia. And we just want to say thank you for, for getting up every Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m. and supporting our broadcast. Uh, write us to let us know what you think. Write us to let us know that the teaching helped you. Uh, you can reach to us at graceviewcoc at gmail.com or you can write us at P.O. Box 722, Anderson, South Carolina, 29622. Also, make sure you like us on Facebook. The information should be on your screen. And just know all of the Passion for Christ episodes are archived on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash grace view sc god bless you for tuning in let's get back to this message it's going to bless your life thank you so much for watching six stop using methods that don't work stop using methods that don't work i find it interesting uh that when you read verse number 39 i, I would that you read that with me uh first samuel 17 and verse number 30 let's go back up to verse number 38 um <laughs> then saul clothed David with his garments and put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with armor. It, isn't it interesting that the people who don't have no faith uh, to fight want to tell you what to wear to fight? Saul, you scared, right? You're running away from the giant, but Saul wanted to tell David what to put on to fight. And then we do that all the time. We, we listen to unfaithful people, unspiritual people. We listen to people who have spoken fear into our spirit and you own the internet. And you listen to all the negativity about your problem, about your situation. And you're listening to people who don't have no faith and people who have fear. Amen, somebody. Remember, Saul was the same person that told David, you can't do it. Now David is allowing him to tell him how to go out and fight and what to put on to fight when Saul himself is not willing to go. Stop listening to methods that do not work. You don't believe me? Notice verse number 39. David girded his sword over his armor. Watch this. And tried to walk. Somebody shout, tried to walk. For he had not tested them. Watch this. So David said to Saul, watch this. This is powerful. I cannot go with these. Somebody shout, I cannot go with these. In other words, David, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16 and verse number 18, that David was, was a wise man. Yeah. 
Amen, somebody. He, 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 he was wise because he knew what to say and what to speak. Uh, so you need to make sure that you are wise and smart enough to know that if you have implemented a strategy that is preventing you from your forward progress, be wise enough to know I'm not moving forward with these. This strategy that you gave me, Saul, ain't working for me because I'm trying to walk. Anybody here trying to operate in your marriage? You're trying to make it on your job. You're trying to parent your children. But the strategy that you're using, watch this, y'all keep smiling, ain't working. Now what we do, we so crazy sometimes, we sit there and keep doing the same thing for 20 years. You might well say amen in here. <laughs> amen, somebody. David was a young man, but he was wise and smart enough to realize I'm trying to walk. But the method that I'm using is hindering my forward progress. I cannot go with these. And there's some friends in your life. I said there's some friends in your life. That if you hang around them and do what they tell you to do, you won't be able to make it to heaven with them. Amen, somebody. There's some methods in your life that are unhealthy and destructive. And if you keep doing those methods, you won't be able to make it or be promoted or elevated with them. So have you assessed your forward progress? With the method that you're currently using, using and whether or not you can go with these. Because the Bible says in the next verse that, or maybe it's the same verse. In the same verse, yeah, in verse number 39, the Bible says, uh, I, For I have not tested these, and David took them off. Amen. Take off the, the, the strategy that you're using that's hindering your progress. Take off the thing that's stopping you, is causing you to be mobile, amen somebody, and you can't move, amen somebody. We need to help somebody understand that you have to be smart enough, use your mind, use your brain to understand the method that you're using is hindering your forward progress, amen somebody. So you got to make sure you stop using methods. That don't work because usually God already gives you the method that you need to work. See, sometimes what we try to do is reinvent the wheel. All right, so here's what David did. Watch this. <laughs> David was a shepherd boy. Right. Y'all still follow me? I'm almost done. He was a shepherd boy. So he always would have a stick with him because that's what he did. Shepherds would also have pouches. So sometimes what you need to be elevated by God and promoted by God, watch this, is already in you. Somebody shout already, it's already in me. Go ahead. Go. One more time, it's already in me. Go ahead. It's already in you. So what we try to do is we try to use people's methods who don't have any faith to get elevated and it doesn't work. Because the Bible teaches us that he already had a stick in his hand. So what he did was optically look around and find five smooth stones. Can I tell you that God, when you have the spirit of God in you, even though you may not see it at first, God will allow you to find the right resources. I'm preaching much better than you're responding right now. He'll allow you to just to turn around. Have anybody been driving before and you was one paying attention? You probably was texting while driving. Amen, somebody. And right when you looked up, you was about to hit another call on the other side. Right in the nick of time. Amen, somebody. God bless you to turn that thing around. And some of us barely made it out. Anybody here barely made it out of a situation before? I need some honest Christians up here. I'm trying to close this thing, church. And, and it was God that allowed you to have that awareness in your life. So David looked around and found five smooth stones. So David said, I can't go with these because these is hindering my progress. So what David did, we you know what he did? He used what he already had. He used that slingshot. So can't you see David? Amen. Somebody, David is wine. Come on in here, y'all. He's, he's winding this thing up. Amen, somebody. And it's time to go fight. And so David's going to say, I'm not going to fight the way you want me to fight. I'm going to fight the way I fight. And, and let me just drop this into your spirit. Sometimes when you hear negativity, you have to replace negativity with positivity. Open up your mouth and replace negativity with positivity. I don't have time, but just write it down. In verse number 32, verse number 34, and verse number 37, you'll find these words. David said. David said. David said. See, what, what Saul did not know, David has had some experiences in his life before, Claude, where he has faced some giants in his life. David would tell you that there was a time when there was a lion. Or bear. Which one is it, David? It was a lion or a bear. Amen, somebody. They came and tried to attack one of my earthly father's sheep. And I grabbed it from his, he tried to grab it from his mouth. And I turned around and I grabbed him by his mane and I killed him. Are you a warrior? I need some warriors up in here. I need some hunters up in here. Anybody hunts? They said, listen, you know you are a warrior when you hunt hunters. 
A lion or a bear is one of the most terrifying animals you're going to see. But David was a mighty man of valor. And the Bible says in verse number 16, chapter number 16, verse number uh, uh, 7, 16, verse number 18, that he was a warrior. Somebody shout warrior. warrior. Listen, David was a warrior. Are you a warrior? Some of y'all ain't ready to fight. And you're not going to be blessed until you become a warrior. David hunted the hunters. If an if a animal like a, a lion or, or, or bear came at David, David was going to fight that thing. And some of y'all would have been, ooh, I can't. Uh-uh. David said, nah, I'm killing this one. Uh -huh. Amen, somebody. I'm a killer. Hey, listen, I'm like, uh, Tupac said, uh, I ain't no killer, but don't push me. Amen, somebody. Sometimes sometime those obstacles will bring out the best in you. Amen, somebody. And sometimes it's that pressure that you need for God can bring out something in you that you never thought you would do. But you got to have the spirit and be a mighty person of valor. So David, David accepted the challenge. Uh, stop using the method that didn't work. And let me just leave you with, with this. This is the last one. Spiritual people fight believing God will deliver us. Spiritual people. Somebody shout spiritual people. When we fight, we believe that God is going to deliver us. I don't have time, but I want you to read uh, the next few verses here. Because what the devil will do, the enemy, your giant, he will manipulate your mind and get you to believe some things. The enemy, the Bible says in verse number 42, don't have time to read it, but the enemy despised David. Can I tell you that your enemy don't like you? Your enemy just can't stand the sight of you. Your enemy thinks that you are despicable. The Bible says in verse number 42 that, that uh, the giant despised David. And when he looked at him, you know what he saw? The enemy tries to attack your age. He attacks, he said, man, you gonna, you gonna, you're a young man. He also attacks your appearance. Somebody shout appearance. Yeah. i never forget. I was, I was preaching somewhere. I can't tell you where because you know the place. But uh, I was preaching. Y'all keep smiling this morning. <laughs> I was preaching somewhere and the, and the brother came up to me, uh, church, and the brother said, uh, we're going to pray for you before you preach. And I said, okay. And we, they, they took me in the back and they prayed for me. And after I preached and we got finished with the service, the brother came up to me and said, man, he said, I ain't going to lie, brother Jones. When I looked at you, I, I said, man, this brother can't preach a lick. But I, I exceeded his expectations for me because he thought based on whatever he th thought about my appearance that I couldn't preach. And the devil wants to plant a seed of doubt in your mind to tell you because of the way you look, because of your skin color, because of your hair texture, be because of this, because you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're too tall, you're too short. Amen, somebody. He wants to attack you to tell you that you can't win. Amen, somebody. He attacks your complexion. And God wanted you to be whatever complexion he wanted you to be. Amen, somebody. You can try to switch it all you want, but that's just who you are. Amen, somebody. And the devil will attack your tactics. The devil said, uh, the giant says, you, uh, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? <laughs> In other words, here, go, here, here goes David trying to come with a slingshot. And he said, man, you're going to come at me like that. He wants you to fight the way he thinks you can win. But we don't fight that way as people of God. We have a different tactic. Amen, somebody. So David had a twofold purpose. Number one, he wanted to prove that God, somebody shout God. God, God is a deliverer. Yeah. And he wanted everybody to know that the God of Israel was a deliverer. Number two, David wanted everybody to know that God does not deliver based on human might. God doesn't need the swords. God doesn't need all of the armor. God could take five smooth stones and a slingshot and wind it up with a little 15 year old boy amen somebody and, 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 and drop a giant That's right. and you know what the bible says when that stone when he, when he let that stone go into his face it went down and he fell forward mm. not backwards he fell, he fell forward and you know what David did instead of running around and doing a victory dance you know what David did David ran up on him and realized that David did not have a sword you know, why, you, why would you think that David needed a sword? Because David said, I want to cut his head off. Where are my warriors up, at, up in here? Amen, somebody. I don't, I don't, I don't just want to kill him. I want to finish his job. And I want to walk around. Uh-huh. Amen, somebody. So y'all looking at me for me. I need some warriors up in here. If you want to be promoted, you got to make sure you are a warrior. Are you ready to devour your enemy? He meant somebody. So we got to make sure we understand something clearly. God wants everybody to know. And it could be that your giant uh, that you're going through right now is so that God could have everybody around you and that everybody know that there's a God that delivers you. 
that there's a God that delivered you. And also, God wants everybody to know God doesn't deliver in the ways that man delivers. Because if, if, if God allowed David to uh, defeat the giant using the armor and using the swords like Saul, then David could then say, well, I did it. Now, the accuracy of that slingshot, you know, there ain't nothing but God. Amen, somebody. God had to bless him to be accurate. Amen, somebody. So if you want to be promoted, there's some powerful principles of promotion. And I need everybody in here elated that God wants to elevate you. Anybody here elated that God wants to elevate you? Amen, somebody. Here's what we got to do. Follow these principles. God promoted Jesus the same way. I said God promoted Jesus uh, the same way. And let me just tell you this, people will misinterpret your mission. Jesus was promoted by God, but watch this, Jesus had to go through a lot of hell in his life. Let me tell you something, people misinterpret your mission. They thought that if we beat Jesus, we mock him, we spit on him. We torture him, and if we humiliate him, that he'll give in to us. Amen, somebody. And he won't, he'll stop claiming who he's claiming himself to be. But they misinterpreted his mission. Jesus was not going to not claim who he was to save his life for, because the very reason that Jesus came was not to save his life, but to save our lives. So he wanted to die. You couldn't take Jesus life. Jesus had to give it. And since Jesus gave his life, that is the good news. Somebody shout good news that God loved us so much that he was willing to send Jesus to die for our sins. And if you are honest about your life and all the things you've done, you realize that you need a savior. Anybody here by a show of hands know you, you need a savior. I, I need a savior because every day, man, I, I'm guilty when I mess up. Anybody here guilty? Just feel guilty, guilty when you mess up. And guess what? You are guilty. But because of the grace of God, God can extinguish your guilt through the blood of Jesus. Amen, somebody. And even though we did the wrong things because of our relationship, we keep going on because Jesus had to be promoted. But before Jesus was promoted, he had to suffer. Amen. He had to be mocked and spat upon and beaten and humiliated and ridiculed before God elevated him. They misinterpreted his mission. So when did he get elevated? When he said it is finished and watch this beloved while you have blood still running warm in your veins it ain't over yet look at your neighbor's and say, neighbor it's not over yet it's not over yet it's not over yet wow you got blood running warms in your vein and, and, until god blesses you to give up the ghost that's when it's over so you hang in there and know that god will promote you anybody here believe that on this morning there's just some principles that we got to make sure we, we have grace you church of christ want to thank you for listening if the Passion for Christ television broadcast has blessed your life this morning and you would like to donate, you can go online to www.graceviewcoc.com, click on the donate tab, and you can make your tax deductible donation to this broadcast. God bless you. Tune in next week.